Kevin here from Form Performance, and uh, we're going to go over some of the upgrades that Zach did on his uh, Jeep Wrangler YJ, and uh, why he needed some of those upgrades for a future trip that he had planned with his family. Hey everybody, it's Zach. I uh, was looking at with, uh, going on a camping trip with my uh, sons, and having a lot of gear with uh, two teenagers, there wasn't much space for uh, extra storage in a uh, YJ. So I had, or, um, when I bought the Jeep originally, got a steel cargo carrier to mount on the back, but we wound up having a two inch ball hitch already uh, on the bumper, so there was no place to mount the original sleeve. Um, so I did get that sleeve and we had intended uh, to use it um, on the front, but after inspecting it and looking at it, uh, Kevin and I decided that trying to weld that onto the bottom of the bumper uh, probably wouldn't be the best, uh, most stable option. Especially with it now being in front of me, so if it broke, I would then run over everything in the uh, cargo carrier. So it wasn't really an ideal situation. I found this um, mounting bracket uh, from Harbor Freight. It was under 30 bucks and these flanged nut and bolts to eliminate needing to have lock nut and washers uh, just to make it a little bit easier and tighter. So we went ahead and lined it up and made some marks and then got to work drilling some holes. So we tried to center the hitch mount as best we could in the center of the bumper. You can kind of look at the grill and uh, what's left of your bumper. In Zach's case, we have a cut down bumper for some clearance. And uh, generally speaking, it's in the center of the two E's, but uh, take a tape measure and just do your best to center it. There is some movement within the, the actual mount itself to center it a little bit more. You have some leeway. Um, what Zach's gonna use here is basically a 500 pound capacity. Uh, basically, it's like a hitch mounted uh, basket carrier. Uh, I may have the terminology there wrong. But uh, you can see here Zach's under the Jeep and uh, we're trying to mark out some of the holes we're going to drill. I believe the flange nuts and bolts were about 5 eighths or so. Again, just take the mount to a hardware store and, and look around and see what you can get. And basically we're trying to get the largest bolt that we could fit through those holes. I actually went to a local True Value a hardware store instead of a big box retailer and the gentleman um, showed me these bolts they weren't cheap the set was thirty dollars but it made the installation and having to use additional washers and lock nut washers it was just a much simpler cleaner tighter fit in my opinion you can see Zach here he's center punching some of the holes that we had lined out with the basically like a sharpie uh, what you're going to want to do here is start with like a smaller bit and then work your way up to the size that you need. Uh, and I, this be I believe we actually used every single size from the smallest one to the biggest in the set, didn't we? Yeah, I think we bought a set from Harbor Freight, one of those titanium coated uh, drill sets. I think the set was like 10 bucks or something on sale. Obviously, if you have a, a better set around, you may have uh, easier results than Zach did here. It took him about a half hour to drill out all these holes. We were taking our time and just stepping up. Uh, you can use a unibit at the end if you need to just elongate the hole just slightly. You do want to have some movement uh, left and right and uh, just to center it as best you can. Now you can hear, uh, see that Zach is starting with a small bit, and uh, it can be frustrating. You're on your back, wear some safety goggles. There's going to be metal flying everywhere. In our case, we just used a cordless drill. Uh, if you have a hammer drill or a, a larger drill, that may make this slightly easier for you. You'd be able to apply a little bit more torque. I will say, from the experience, I did want to jump up in bits, you know, quickly and skip a few thinking that it would be easier because while well, it almost fit anyway but I, when not going incrementally and trying to skip the drill would uh, skip, bang out to the side and 
didn't really work well so I realized after the first hole just being patient and working through all the different bits even though it was time consuming really made the job the easiest and the cleanest it could be. Now also you could uh, use some other method to uh, punch out the holes if you have access to like a large metal punch you could take your bumper off have them punched out maybe even at a machine shop or something save yourself some of the hassle drawing it out most people may not have access to that you could possibly have used a plasma cutter if the bumper was off I wouldn't suggest doing it on the car there is a reinforcement like tube behind this bumper and you don't want to blast a hole through that and I don't know about you guys, but I don't know too many people with the plasma cutter laying around, and I didn't really feel like taking the bumper off to get this job done, so I think the whole idea of these Jeeps is a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of sweat and equity, a little bit of hard work, and you can get things you want working. As you can tell, Zach's getting a little frustrated at this point just for stepping up every single size in this uh, drill bit set that we had. He's kind of just going over some of the bits that it's like, all right, I started with the smallest one. I'm kind of working my way up. It's a little bit of time, but it, at the end result, you're going to be really happy with that. That's a unit bit that Zach has in his hand. Uh, that was at the end what really helped open up the hole because you had, the, you had the, um, the depth at the beginning of the bumper, but you needed to take it all the way through, and the unit bit really did the job. Now you can buy these unit bits at Harbor Freight. I believe this whole set came from Harbor Freight. You can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, True Value, regular hardware store, wherever. It doesn't really matter. They sell them online, Amazon. They're, they're not terribly expensive. You, you may ruin the bit, possibly, but if you've spent five or six bucks on the bit, it's just cost to do a business in this case. Now Zach's got some of the flange nuts and bolts in his hand. Uh, these are heavy duty grade eight. I would suggest not using anything less than a grade 8 bolt. Uh, you definitely don't want this to break off at highway speeds. This is a safety issue in my opinion. Another thing you could possibly do is put the bolts in and actually maybe spot weld it or stitch weld it around the corners. Uh, that might be slight overkill. Um, we're not intending to tow anything with the front of this uh, hitch mount. It's really just going to have the basket on there with possibly a few hundred pounds of uh, supplies on it. If it ever does get stuck in the woods, it will have a, a hitch to get towed out with, but I don't anticipate that in the future. Yeah, uh, now if you have a custom front bumper, uh, I know a lot of them come with this kind of a hitch mount in the front, so this is just not going to be anything that you're going to want to add an additional hitch mount to. And the idea of leaning a 40 pound hitch mount on your head and uh, threading the bolts is not a good idea. Yeah, as you can this tell. This did not work out. You can tell Zach's kind of uh, struggling with this. I'm going to put the camera down in a second and uh, give Zach a hand with this before we have to take him to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, it did not. Uh, at least I had the smarts to know to give up before I uh, dropped it on my head. Now, you could probably use some kind of uh, vice grip or a clamp to hold that in place. I think I suggested using like a jack, right? You could, ma jack it up you could maybe it. use a jack or if something. If you're doing it by yourself. Yeah, if, so, if you could sort of get something under there to hold it in place. All right, Zach sort of got them hand tied at this point. There's just barely enough room to get a wrench behind it, and uh, you can use a ratchet, or if you want, just uh, grab your impact and send these uh, uh, bolts home and uh, bolts and nuts home. You can see there's a little play there in it to adjust it straight on. Yeah, take a look at it. Maybe take out the tape measure again and just center it the best you can. Uh, take your time, tighten them all up. and. Uh, yeah, I guess I didn't get to use the impact on this. No, Zach did, went old school with this. He's using the typical hand power here to, to do this. It's fine. He's making some final tweaks here and there. Um, now there's not going to be any lights or anything that's needed for the front of this hitch mount. So this is purely just for mounting the basket and a possible recovery of the Jeep if necessary. Um, some people like to tow their Jeep with a mount like this. We do have a separate type of purpose-built uh, Jeep front tow mount that goes through the bumper. But in this case, we're not mounting this to this Jeep. Um, Zach is just struggling here. He's got a little bit of an extension on the, the ratchet, so he's not banging his hand against the, uh, the hitch mount. Uh, just take your time with this. 
not a big deal. Anybody can do this. There's really no torque spending specs for this. Just make it really tight. Um, Again, anything that you, you, anything that falls off of this. Obviously, if you have something behind you and it falls off, you need to worry about the people behind you. But if this falls off, you won't see it, and you're going to run it over instantly. Now you're going to lose a little bit of ground clearance in the front here. Uh, your approach angle. In Zach's case, it's not such a big deal. He's not really doing any heavy-duty off-road with his Jeep currently. So, But just keep that in mind. Um, and obviously, don't want to really attempt any kind of serious off-roading with the, the front basket mounted to this because it's just going to slam into every kind of obstacle you can think of. Yep. Now, I did think the uh, another option with having that type of a hitch mount in the front, I could use this basket uh, like this. I could also mount a um, basket for bicycles. Um, they have tow hitch bicycle mounts that you can hold two or three bicycles. Also on this, uh, I realized that we wanted to make sure that when I have my gear, this box, um, you need to make sure you maintain adequate airflow to the engine. Um, even though the basket is a foot forward from the radiator, you really don't want to go above that bumper line with any storage uh, for fear of depriving the engine of uh, oxygen. Now, obviously, you're going to have to use a ratchet strap to hold down uh, this uh, tote. Guys, if you found this video helpful and useful, please like, comment, subscribe. Sorry about the lost audio. We did the best we could to try to recover it, but we couldn't, so we did a little bit of an voiceover for this video and uh, thanks again for watching guys. Absolutely.